Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very fascinating topic, Cognitive Neurology Part 11 memory part 2 dementia cognitive neurology part 11 memory part 2 dementia so today we are going to talk about all the fascinating concepts of dementia memory loss or dementia dementia is defined as an acquired deterioration in cognitive abilities that impairs the successful performance of activities of daily living episodic memory the ability to recall events specific in time and place is the cognitive function most commonly lost the clinical cause may be slowly progressive example alzheimer's dementia or static example anoxic encephalopathy or fluctuation example dementia with lewy bodies cholinergic signaling is critical for attention and memory functions which forms the basis for cholinergic treatment for Alzheimer's dementia. The causes of dementia. The single strongest risk factor for dementia is increasing age. At age 85 years, the average person is able to learn and recall approximately one half of the items that he could remember at the age of 18. So the single strongest risk factor for dementia is increasing age. Alzheimer's disease and Alzheimer's dementia is the most common cause of dementia in the Western world and vascular dementia is considered the second most frequent cause of dementia. The three most common potentially reversible diagnoses are depression, normal pressure hydrocephalus and alcohol dependence. The diagnostic categories of dementia. Not all causes of dementia are irreversible. There are many causes of dementia which are reversible. So as a clinician, our primary goal is to identify the reversible causes of dementia and treat it. So the diagnostic categories of dementia could be reversible causes, irreversible and degenerative dementias and psychiatric disorders. The reversible causes are hypothyroidism. Hyperthyroidism causes dementia and when we give thyroxine, the, person's, the person gets back his memory. Thiamine deficiency, vitamin B deficiency, especially seen in alcoholics. Normal pressure hydrocephalus. Subdural hematoma, especially a chronic subdural hematoma is one of the important treatable and reversible cause of dementia. All we need to take is to identify it by imaging. Call a neurosurgeon, take the hematoma out. He gets back his memory. Chronic infections, brain tumors, drug intoxication, autoimmune encephalopathy where we can give steroids. So these are all the reversible causes of dementia wherein there is good treatment and we may be able to reverse the dementia. Hypothyroidism, time in deficiency, normal pressure hydrocephalus, subdural hematoma, chronic infections, brain tumors, drug intoxication and autoimmune encephalopathy. But then there are irreversible and degenerative dementias where we may not be able to do much like Alzheimer's dementia, frontotemporal dementia, Huntington's dementia, dementia with Lewy bodies, vascular, leukoencephalopathies and Parkinson's disease. And there are other psychiatric disorders also like depression, schizophrenia and conversion disorders. Dementia, uh, the clinical approach to the patient. The two major issues should be kept at the forefront. What is the best fit for a clinical diagnosis? What components of the dementia syndrome is treatable or reversible? History and physical examination are the most important aspects of the clinical approach to the demented patients. The history should concentrate on the onset, duration and tempo of the progression. An acute or subacute onset of confusion should trigger a search for intoxication, infection or metabolic derangement. An elderly person with a slowly progressive memory loss over several years is likely to suffer from Alzheimer's dementia. 
personality change, disinhibition and weight gain or compulsive eating such as frontotemporal dementia. The diagnosis of dementia with Lewy body is suggested by early visual hallucinations, Parkinsonism, sensitivity to psychoactive medications or proneness to delirium, rapid eye movement behavior disorder, Capgras syndrome, mistaken identity. A history of stroke with irregular stepwise progression and with atherosclerotic risk factors suggest vascular dementia. Rapid progression with motor rigidity and myoclonus suggests Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. Gait disorder may suggest normal pressure hydrocephalus. High risk sexual behavior suggests sexually transmitted disorders like syphilis and HIV. A history of trauma could indicate chronic subdural hematoma. Amnesia with psychosis with mesial temporal MRI changes should suggest paraneoplastic limbic encephalitis or autoimmune encephalopathy. Alcohol abuse creates a risk for thiamine deficiency. Vitamin B12 deficiency is seen in persons with a history of gastric surgery and vegetarians. Sedatives and analgesics may raise the issue of drug intoxication. Family history may be present in Huntington's disease, Alzheimer's dementia, frontotemporal dementia and dementia with Lewy bodies. That's about history. Examination. What are all the important points we need to consider in examining a person who has got dementia? Hemiparesis or other focal neurological deficits suggest vascular dementia or brain tumor. Dementia with a myelopathy and peripheral neuropathy suggests vitamin B12 deficiency. Peripheral neuropathy could also indicate another vitamin deficiency, heavy metal intoxication, thyroid dysfunction, dry cool skin, hair loss and bradycardia such as hypothyroidism, fluctuating conf confusion associated with repetitive stereotype movements may indicate ongoing seizures, profound bilateral sensory neuronal hearing loss in a younger patient with short stature or myopathy should suggest a mitochondrial disorder. Typical Alzheimer's disease space motor systems until late later in the course. Dementia with Lewy bodies often, often starts with visual hallucinations or dementia. Symptoms referable to the lower brainstem like rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder, gastrointestinal or autonomic problems may arise years or even decades before Parkinsonism or dementia. The corticobasal syndrome features alien limb phenomenon, asymmetric akinesia and rigidity. Progressive supranuclear palsy is associated with unexplained falls, axial rigidity, dysphagia and vertical gaze defects. Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease is, suggest the, is suggested by the presence of diffuse rigidity, prominent often startle sensitive myoclonus. So the routine evaluation of dementia after having got a good history and examined, we need to do a certain laboratory test. The common laboratory tests include thyroid function tests, especially the TH, TSH thyroid stimulating hormone, vitamin B12 levels, complete blood count, electrolytes, CT and MRI. The treatment of dementia. The major goals of dementia management are to treat reversible causes and to provide comfort and support to the patient and caregivers. Thyroid replacement for hypothyroidism, vitamin therapy for thiamine or B12 deficiency, antimicrobial for opportunistic infections or antiretrovirals for HIV, ventricular shunting for normal pressure hydrocephalus, appropriate surgical, radiational and or chemotherapeutic treatment for CNS neoplasms, removal of cognitive impairing drugs or medication, antidepressants like selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors for depression, coronist inhibitors and memantidine for Alzheimer's dementia and finally the non-drug behavioral therapy. Preparing a list, schedules, calendars and labels can be helpful in the early stages. A move to the retirement complex nursing home can help demented patients. I hope you have enjoyed listening to my concepts on memory loss and dementia as much as I have enjoyed delivering it. If you have liked it or if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts or my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts or you can get connected to me on my email cklpm at gmail.com. 
This is the book Focus Neurology which I've written wherein I put all the important neurology concepts. It's available online from all in leading booksellers including Amazon. If you're interested, you can buy it online. But please like and subscribe my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my webpage Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.